So this clip is more about the interpretation and giving you some background about this machine. The whole point of the bone density machine, which is it's kind of referred to, and the brand name of this is called the Achilles Express. So an Achilles has to do with the Achilles heel because that's where it's actually measuring its thing from. But remember, the reason we are using the bone density machine is to screen for, not diagnose, but screen for osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a disease of weak bones. The reason why this device is so helpful and why patients really enjoy it is that osteoporosis doesn't have any symptoms. Usually you have no idea that you're at risk for osteoporosis or that you have osteoporosis because the only way you really find out about it is that when you fall or have an injury you break a bone. So with these brittle bones or thinner bones they put patients at a greater risk for fall. So truly this is a disease that or that develops over a lifespan and usually becomes dangerous to where the point to where the bones will break much more easily when you're older in life. And uh, some things about osteoporosis, just know there are some things or some risk factors that make it more likely to occur. Some things patients can't do anything about includes their age. So certainly you're more at risk for osteoporosis as you get older. Uh, gender is a big difference. So females in general have a very much higher risk for developing osteoporosis than the likelihood of breaking bones compared to men. This is especially true after menopause, because we said age, it develops more with age, but with women, especially when they change, uh, hit menopause, not only are they becoming older, they were losing a protective hormone of estrogen. So during menopause and with the loss of estrogen after menopause, women certainly have a much greater increase in osteoporosis because they lose that beneficial hormone. Some other things that, that are more, uh, well, the last thing that's not modifiable, is race so caucasian and asian races are more likely to develop osteoporosis than others uh, some things that lifestyle things that are unmodifiable that though increase the risk for patients would include um, inactivity so the more active you are particularly for weight bearing walking running uh, those types of activities uh, those certainly help strengthen bones, so if you're inactive, then those bones don't get that sort of benefit and become a little bit weaker that way. Uh, smoking has been shown to increase osteoporosis and even alcohol consumption. So both smoking and alcohol for, for real this time, definitely the more somebody does that, the more they are increasing their risks for osteoporosis as well. So those are more modifiable lifestyle things, okay? So what we are doing, when I, I wanna make sure you understand, this machine, this um, Achilles uh, inside, uh, is actually using ultrasound or sound waves to pass through uh, the heel bone, okay? That's very convenient and easy to obtain. The patient only has to take off his shoe and sock. It's not particularly invasive. There's no blood. There's no risk for any sort of blood-borne pathogens, so it's very convenient. But the only thing that's important for students to understand as you're talking to your patients, the reason this is a screening is twofold, is that A, it's testing a bone we're not really that worried about. People don't have real health concerns because they break their heel bone, even when they become elderly. They're really worried about breaking their hip or their spine or some other fractures of their uh, longer arms or legs. Those are the health risks. But it's very convenient to be able to measure the calcaneus or the heel bone. So the assumption we're making is that the density of the heel bone will change like the density of the hip or to the, to the uh, spine. So we're kind of making that assumption. And the ultrasound sound waves don't pose any health risk to the patient or to the, to the user. But if these values do come out to be indicative of screening for the potential, saying that your values are low enough, this might be osteopenia, meaning the risk for osteoporosis, or actually osteoporosis, where our conclusion isn't that you have that disease, but it says that you definitely might have that disease. You absolutely want to talk to your doctor who can do a complete health background, health history on you. So not only your family history and your social history and all those things as well, they would run more of a diagnostic test, which is called a DEXA, dual x-ray absorptometry. And they actually send x-rays through the hip and the spine, which are the primary locations that we're most concerned about a fracture occurring at. And based off of those results, they would actually diagnose a patient with osteoporosis. So again, here, we're not diagnosing anything. We're really trying to identify patients. And this is where this machine is actually really good at, patients who would benefit really speaking to their doctor because there is some of this evidence from this machine showing that they certainly have a lower density based off of this ultrasound, and that would benefit them to look into it further. And that's all we're trying to accomplish with this, okay? Since finishing up on that same idea, though, is that even if the results are high and, and, and healthy, meaning highly dense, uh, or not, there are some modifiable things that patients can do to improve their bone health. 
So that's a nice discussion you can have, whether the results are great, and you say that your results are really good, there's no concerns about osteoporosis, here's some things you're probably doing that you should keep doing. Or if patient's values are low or concerning, then you know maybe they need to speak with their doctor, and maybe there are things that you know, even until you speak with your doctor, some things that you can consider is that if you're a smoker, to stop smoking. Again, if you drink alcohol, limit it to more than one or two drinks in a, a night. And then certainly uh, becoming more active, physically active. What's important about exercise, though, remember, it's the walking, running, stairs. It isn't sitting on a bike cycling. Well, that's good for aerobic health and cardiovascular health, but it doesn't help with osteoporosis or bone density. So the walking, jogging, running, or stairs do a much better job. So a little bit of exercise like that helps. And the big supplementation in terms of nutrition is a healthy diet, certainly. The big things that we always try to do to improve bone health are calcium and vitamin D. So essentially for women less than 50, it's uh, 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day. Over 50, it's 1,200 milligrams. I just always remember 1,200 milligrams. That's kind of what the most of the supplements are designed for replacing every day anyways. So again, you're going to want to do 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day. But you know what they're saying now is that, in the, at least in American diets, that most foods we have are calcium supplemented. So most people don't have a hard time getting a lot of their calcium. It may be as much as important to replace their vitamin D. So vitamin D is what the body uses to be able to absorb and use that calcium. So making sure they're getting anywhere from 600 to 800 units per day of vitamin D. So vitamin D supplementation, calcium supplementation, lifestyle changes are things that can certainly help improve their bone density. Although remember, we talked about age and genetics and things that are not necessarily modifiable. So it is something that if this machine, uh, and bone density changes slowly over time. So if they get a great result, that's fantastic. They wouldn't even need to think about it again for maybe five to 10 years. So this is something you don't have to routinely or regularly, or certainly not annually have to even recheck. And lastly, if somebody does values come out low and they're concerning, then the other thing you can talk about is that there are good treatments available for this. So not only are the lifestyle modifications, but speaking to your doctor and coming up with a nice treatment plan, there are drugs like a class called bisphosphonates that have been shown to be definitely effective at increasing bone density. So even if their value comes out low, that's not a bad finding, that's an important finding. It means now you have the information to talk to your doctor, come up with a treatment plan, and to reverse these changes. And the sooner you know, the fat longer you have to actually reverse those changes. So both good and bad results can be, you know, talk to the patient about in a positive result. All right, so now let's talk about the results. And if you want to kind of make sure you can kind of see some of these things here, let's maybe look at this color chart here that's a little more visible in this. Because this machine is a little bit more difficult than a, like a blood glucose machine or even a cholesterol value because while it measures an actual number called a stiffness index, we don't really talk about that value for the patient. What's important is what this machine does is with that stiffness in information, it will actually calculate two things, potentially. And for both males and females, it will calculate a T-score. And all a T-score is, it's a statistic. It's taking the value that this patient got and is comparing it to a healthy 22, 23, or maybe 25-year-old. I can't remember. It's like a 20, we'll just say 25-year-old. So, and why are they comparing it to a 25-year-old? On average, that's when the person has their thickest bone density. So we're comparing your value to what we would have predicted in a healthy 25-year-old with a maximum bone density. So clearly, would you want to be close to that value? Absolutely. You would like to see your value to be as close to that as possible. And what a T-score is, is, is a statistic. It's the number of standard deviations away from that 25-year-old value. So maybe ideally, you would like a value to be zero. A T-score of zero means you're exactly the same density as somebody or of your same gender at the age of 25. That would be great. Uh, a T-score of positive means greater than that value it means you're more dense. And we don't have any concerns about anyone who is more dense than their age match for the 25-year-old. So uh, a, uh, anywhere from plus one uh, to zero is great. There's no issues with it being above. And even going a little bit below isn't so much a problem. Uh, we can say that even if your standard deviation is no more than one standard deviation below, so you can be as low as negative one in your T-score and still be considered within a normal fluctuation of range. Okay, you don't have to be exactly the 25-year-old, but if you're anywhere from minus one up to plus one or right at zero, that's considered kind of in this green zone, as you can kind of see here. The green zone goes on this chart from anywhere plus two down to minus one. So from minus one to plus two, or anywhere greater than minus one, that's the green zone. That's considered a healthy bone density for you. 
Okay. Where we get to have concerns, you can see in the yellow bar, is if we're more than one standard deviation below, anywhere from minus 1 to minus 2.5, that's the yellow zone where we call osteopenic. That means your bone density is certainly enough of a standard deviation away from what we would have predicted for a 25-year-old that it's gone, it's less. It's not as high as it used to probably was for you. But it's not at the point where we consider kind of osteoporosis is anything below 2.5. So again, the main things to remember when you're interpreting values for patients, good values, green values, healthy values, or any values greater than negative one. Negative one or higher, then those values are good. Anywhere from between negative one to negative 2.5 is the yellow zone. That's a concerning zone. That might be something to really look at, maybe lifestyle changes, maybe exercise, supplementation, things that can maybe reverse that train that change. Uh, anything less than negative 2.5 even on this machine, well, even though we're not diagnosing osteoporosis the way I would interpret that for the patient, is an absolute reason to go ahead and contact your prescriber. It doesn't have to be today, it's not like you're at any immediate risk, but you're going to want to reverse that trend. Your bone density certainly appears to be low enough that it increased your risk for a fracture if you were to fall. So let's speak to your doctor and let's come up with a treatment plan and try to see what we can do to reverse that trend. Okay. This is results. The T-score is for both male and female. So either gender patient is that same interpretation. The thing that we can do a little bit more with females that we can't do for males is actually compare their Z-score. And a Z-score, and if you can kind of look on here, there's kind of this darker line here. This darker line shows you throughout the age of a female what a normal female's bone density would happen. And we can see, as we said, as the older you get, your bones don't stay as dense as they used to be. So you'll see this dark line tends to get lower and more negative in terms of the T-score. And that's okay, as, and especially as women get older, you'll notice there's this more precipitous drop though right around menopause. So after menopause is where you come down to here. But you'll notice this graph says for a normal woman that, that even after menopause, their bone density, while it's lower, should still never get less than negative 2.5. So while a, a normal woman in the 60s and 70s might have a bone density compared to a 25-year-old that's down in the yellow zone, if we can compare to their same age match, so we're not, compared, we're not concerned about comparing them to the 25-year-old anymore, let's take the 70-year-old woman and compare her to other 70-year-old women. And what we know is that another 70-year-old woman wouldn't be way up here, the woman would be down here. But we We'd like to still be as close to our age match counterparts as possible. So that's what the Z-score is. So we're going to check to see what the Z-score is, and they will tell us the number of standard deviations away from an age-matched individual. So that's just helpful to know whether or not for your age, you're where you should be, you're maybe a little bit higher, meaning more dense, or maybe a little bit lower, saying that other women your age tend to have higher densities than you have. That means that you're not as high as they are, that just further increases your risk. There is no set change in your interpretation. We still use the T-score as our main diagnostic tool as whether it's healthy, osteopenic, or osteoporetic. But the Z-score is very helpful, and, and, and patients really like that. And female patients like to know where they are for their own age as well. Okay? So those are the main interpretations. So I was showing this color chart to see that. If you want to look over here, this is the graph that we'll print off from the actual machine. It's, there's a lot of numbers here which can be confusing at first. And as I said, this is the stiffness index. That's the number the machine actually measures. But we don't really need to talk to the patient about that. So that's the, that's the number that it uses to calculate the T-score and the Z-score. This gives you kind of just the information that the machine had when it ran the test. Okay, This are just some diagnostic informations. What you really need to do to help interpret the patient is down here is that this is their t-score you can see the t-score here was 0 0.8 and it's positive again you'd want to look to see if there's a negative sign in front of it that was a positive 0 0.8 and we look down here on the z-score and it was also 0 0.8 again those values won't always be the same in this case they were both the same it prints off the same little graph that we just looked at here you'll notice the white here is going to be the green equivalent to the green and healthy the little bitty dots or the the, the bigger dots if you will are going to be osteopenic and these little fine dots down here are going to be less than the negative 2.5 and that's osteoporetic and since this this test was done on a female patient you can see that it also puts the normal age line so that we and it puts the result up here so we can see the x as the patient's results it's definitely within the green t score so we know that that's healthy and that, that the, the fact that that x is definitely even above the line there we know that the z score is higher than we would have predicted for that same age patient so this is a conclusion i would have for this patient is this patient has great bone density there's no concerns about 
increased risk for fracture uh, due to the bone density. This is something they're going to want to keep up their healthy lifestyle. But even though they got a good result, don't just say, it's good, you're done. If this is a good chance to say, and remember, you know, keeping up a good healthy bone density means having lots of activity, weight-bearing activity, good nutrition with calcium and vitamin D, you know, no smoking, no alcohol. Those are the things that you're probably doing that you want to keep doing that kind of keep that density uh, where it is. It's something you don't need to regularly check back on. You know, for someone that young to begin with, 23, and with that high score, I would say you wouldn't need to be back for at least 10 years. If you're still interested after 10 years, you can always come back. But this is a, 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 something that changes certainly more slowly. For a female patient like this, I would say the time that you definitely are going to want to come back and let us reevaluate that is when you get into the 40s and 50s and you start experiencing menopause. So certainly around menopause and after menopause, let's reevaluate that because I would expect this density value to change at that point and we'd want to just do a double check to make sure that those values are okay at that point. Okay. So some questions that I want to make sure, and then I'll answer any questions here that I dealt with, is the difference between this device, again, and what would happen in a doctor's office, is this is a screening device using very safe ultrasonic sound waves. These are the same technology that the doctor uses to look at babies, you know, to use ultrasound to kind of inspect for babies. So it's a very safe system. We're testing the heel bone because it's very convenient and easy to access with very minimal, uh, you know, testing procedure involved. So we're going to make that assumption that what we find in those results using this substitute bone, that is the heel bone, and this substitute method, the ultrasound method, to be accurate enough, and it is, to work as a screening tool to say if these values are low, then that's definitely a reason to go to your doctor who will do a full health history and will actually then probably run x-ray tests on the bones we're most concerned about, which is the heel of the hip and the spine, to make sure that there aren't seen the actual changes in the bones that are most likely. The reason they're most worried about osteoporosis is in elderly patients because of their age. But keep in mind, still, even if their values are, are low and you have a person who is concerned about osteoporosis, nobody dies from osteoporosis. You know what they die from or become really sick from is when they fall and they break their bones. So good, important health for elderly, especially elderly females who might have lower bone density is A, we want to make the bones as dense as possible. But we want to also make sure that you're not dizzy, that you keep up as much strength. We want to reduce their chances for falling. So not only do we want thick bones so that if they do fall, they don't break their bones, we would like them to not fall in the first place. So a lot of times there's coordination. This is where, as a far from a pharmacy perspective, you can look at medications that they're on, because if they're on sleeping meds, ambiens, uh, you know, things like that, or benzodiazepines or pain medications, that's going to affect their coordination. That might make them more likely to fall to begin with. So there's this whole kind of bone density and osteoporosis is a part of the bigger picture which is preventing falls and those injuries from those falls to begin with so certainly you know if you're doing an older population that comes up more a lot of times in pharmacy school you're doing a younger population who aren't really at risk for having broken bones where they're at now but it brings up family history you can talk to them now do you have any family members because both men and female if there is a history of broken bones that is when family members have fallen they've broken their bones you know and, and looking at certain other aspects that might increase their risk and it's something that they can think about and if they were interested in getting their bone density checked to the begin with you know kind of get out why were you interested in doing this was there something that you were thinking about that made you want to kind of get this test result and kind of follow up with them on that uh, any other questions that i didn't address what do I do with this little piece of paper after I've gotten it? Do I bring it to my doctor or do I throw it away? Excellent. So uh, the question was this print off here, what should they do with it? They should definitely keep it for their own references. They should could take, consider if they can remember to take it to their doctors on the next uh, visit, that would be important. The doctor can then put it into their health record. Uh, and depending on what the results are, the doctor will go further with that. So absolutely, this is important information that they should take and, and give to their doctor. All right. I have a, uh, a brother who's young and drinks a ton of pop, and he's about 14. I want him to get his bone density checked. Can you do it on this machine? So I think a, a good question is, is about what happens where you'll notice on, this, uh, on the table here, when you look at the results, it doesn't go past or doesn't go below 20 years of age. So it really cannot, this device was not intended to screen for the disease in the very young. And it's not an unreasonable quest because sometimes people are on steroid medications or may have other health conditions which could increase their risk for bone loss even at that young of an age. But in this type of screening device, we can run the test. You can certainly run the test on an individual. You can get a value. However, you need to qualify any patient who's less than 20 years of age 
this value may not be accurate, the value of the T-score, because it, uh, you can't put in, it won't run a test in less than 20. So I think you have to, as a minimum age, run 20. You can take a 14-year-old, put in 20 for the age, and run the test, see what the results are, but the comparison about an age match or the T-score value will not be necessarily accurate. And clearly, if it were to come back really low, I'd be very surprised about that, but that might be a reason to say, you know, this, this machine is reading really low for your value. You know, is there some, you can ask a little bit of health history or certainly still have them talk to their doctor about it, but this is not an accurate screening for osteoporosis in anyone less than 20 years of age. So you definitely need to have that caveat in mind. And it certainly is not intended to be used for health information in anyone less than 20 years of age.